Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams. It's a privilege today to visit on the summit with the head basketball coach for the Wayland Baptist Flying Queens, Coach Jason Cooper, in his second season with the program. Coach, we're going to talk about the fact that you all are picked at the top of the Sooner Athletic Conference, and rightfully so. You should be up there. What a fantastic season last year. Let's go ahead, and I know lots of times preseason polls are based on you know what's been done in the past. If that's the case, definitely you all should be at the top of that ranking. 33-4 and four last season, Coach. Uh, a fantastic year. Finished as the number eight team in the country and a trip to the Sweet 16. Bring us up to speed on where we are. Well, we're, we're definitely excited about um, our success that we had last season. And, um, you know, all this preseason stuff, that's based on what people before us did. So now it's our time to take the reins and, and, and get to work on it. We've, um, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, how the team progressed last year. We actually watched um, some video this last week of our uh, conference tournament championship game and talked about, you know, the continuity that we had and, you know, how the effort, you know, the the effort and the communication that we had defensively and little things like that that were the big difference for us last year. So um, re we're really excited about where we're at. Um, we brought in some uh, very talented young women to uh, fill some spots and, uh, you know, looking to looking to definitely have more depth than we did last year and uh, add a little bit of experience with a couple of uh, solid junior college kids to go along with our uh, what I think is pretty stout um, returning course. So pretty excited about that. We're, we're fired up and uh, we're actually doing our uh, what we call Hutch Hysteria tonight, which is kind of like a midnight madness event. So hopefully we'll get the student body excited and get them ready for next Thursday. Come out and support us. Coach, I want to talk about all those uh, those areas on your team, you know, the returnees and some of these newcomers, but I think it warrants mention we you have to look back just a little bit because I, I I think you all just reload every year, but to do so, you have to have quality players that that are coming through the program, and one of those is Kaylee Edgman, who is the two-time Sooner Athletic Conference Player of the Year. That That is a key departure, a four-time All-American. Uh, I realize that, you know, you, you, you can't replace players like that. And and you want to fill the roles and you want to do as much as you can, but she does warrant mention. Well, she she was tremendous, um, great leader, great student, you know, you know, great person to have, you know, around anything that you're doing. And um we we decided pretty early last year that there was no need in trying to find somebody to replace her because <laughs> there's nobody there's nobody out there like her, you know, and uh just her prowess on the court, especially in the offensive end, you know, she was she was second in the nation and made field goals last year. You know, that's that's hard to replace. And, you know, her leadership will be missed. And, you know, she's, uh, you know, thankfully we've got her sister still. So we've got uh, we got a little bit of Edgman blood left in, in our team. So, but yeah, Kaylee was four-time All-American. Um, she's up there at the top of so many uh, Flying Queen records, which spans back a very long time and some re really great players. And she's the first ever uh, four-time All-American at Wayland, which is a, which is a huge honor and a, and a credit to what she did. So, um, we're definitely going to miss her, um, out on the court in the locker room, riding on the bus, you know, just, just having her around, you know, made us a better team. So we're, we're going to do that, have to do things a little different, have to do things by committee that, um, she could just do by herself. But, um, you know, I think, I think we're primed and ready for it. You know, we're, we'll, we'll still have her around. She'll still be a big part of what we're doing and support our team and, be at some events and stuff hopefully as, as the year progresses so we're we're definitely uh we're definitely feeling the pain of not having her though I'll tell you that. <laughs> well coach i you know what i'll bet you could sneak her on the bus for a couple of trips like that but i'm pretty sure they'd recognize her in, in opponent's gym so you probably couldn't sneak <laughs> her back in a uniform but uh but yeah. that's okay because you have plenty of of returning talent among those jenna cooper had a chance to visit with her last year i know that she's close to your heart as well uh, triple double factory, a player like that. She had uh, a great triple double among other fantastic performances for you last year. She's one of those who's returning for her super senior year. Yes. And, you know, uh, I've watched Jenna shoot a lot of basketballs and uh, do a lot of practice. And, uh, you know, that one of the things that always is in my mind is when she was, you know, probably about eight or nine years old, she had watched the NBA playoffs with me and, talk about you know it was during the time where LeBron James was at Miami and we just you know we we would talk about what they're doing and you know she'd start making comments at that age and kind of understood what was going on you know on the court which you know is pretty unusual I think and you know I, I think it shows um her her IQ is on on the court is 
to me it's it's off the charts and that's that's her biggest asset of course she can score and uh you know does does so much for us but she you know she really is one of those players that's two or three steps ahead of everybody else and what's about to happen you know she's she's not waiting for the next play she's thinking about three plays later and you know she's um she wants to win you know this is her this is her last uh run here and i think she wants to um win more than anything else whether that's you know scoring some big points when we need it or getting the ball where it needs to go or making a big play on the defensive end um she's just uh all around all over the court involved in everything and you know competitive to a fault at times you know she she'll die for a ball at practice or <laughs> I'm like yeah, don't don't run into the score table at practice let's say that you know but um you know just ultra competitive and you know it's it's stuff that you want in your leader and um man I'm I'm proud of her uh, as as a daughter. I'm proud of what she's done and what she's doing and, you know, ecstatic about um, her being on our team again, you know, just, you know, getting that one more chance to coach her and one more chance for her to lead us. And, uh, you know, her coming off of a year where she led the nation in a total assist, you know, it's uh, an All-American year, first team all-conference. I mean, she's, uh, you know, obviously pretty special on the court and we're, we're – um, very blessed to have somebody like that in our locker room also with, with her leadership. So we're, we're excited about her and obviously she'll be a big part of um, what we're doing out there. So we'll just have to find somebody to um, like Kaylee, you know, catch all of her passes and finish the shots. So she gets all those assists again. So, <laughs> Well, coach, I'm, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad that you're proud of her from so many different perspectives. We're speaking now with coach Jason Cooper from Wayland Baptist flying Queens in their 75th season heading into right now or picked at the top of the Sooner Athletic Conference preseason poll. Coach, uh, she won't be alone. There are other players. By the way, uh, great numbers last year. You mentioned the assists, near uh, 5.9 assists per game, 6.9 rebounds per game, 18 points per game along the way. You're going to get a few triple doubles, just almost uh, you have to with those averages. Uh, but she's not alone. You mentioned uh, Kaylee's sister, Caitlin, who is coming back as well as uh, Ashlyn Shelley among returners on this team. Uh, part of the leadership that is already in place. Right. And, you know, Caitlin is, um, in, in a lot of ways, she's like her sister. You know, she, they just have a knack for um, getting good shots off. You know, it's play breaks down and she has the ball in her hand. She's probably going to get a really good shot somehow. And um, just, I mean, their, their footwork is tremendous and their their offensive prowess is, you know, something I've never seen before. They can just get the ball to the basket. And, um, you know, she's, she led the conference in block shots last year. Um, great defensive player. She's, I mean, she she does so much. And, um, you know, when you're on a team with um, Jenna and Kaylee like she was last year, you know, she she didn't get the big accolades and stuff because those guys were getting them. And she's definitely deserving and, uh, you know, definitely all-American caliber player. So, you know, her, you know, she had so many games last year where people just, you know, maybe they took tried to take Kaylee and Jenna away and Caitlin would have 25, 35 points. You know, it was pretty, pretty fun to watch. Um, we actually, we even had one game last year where both sisters, Kaylee and Caitlin, were in the 30s and Jenna was in the high 20s. So it made, made for a made for a tough team to defend for sure. <laughs> so that's an know, understatement, coach. <laughs> you know, and, and, the, and the crazy thing with Caitlin is she's just classified as a sophomore, you know, so she's this is her third year of college basketball. But, you know, she's got she's got a lot of time left for us. And I really think she's uh, going to own the record books at Wayland. She's going to she's going to be a leader. And I, I don't know what category she can't dominate at this point because she's she's so far ahead of every, everybody else's pace. So she's um, so special and so um I mean, in so many ways, we're, we're, we're excited for her and she's, she's excited about stepping up into this new role where she's, um, you know, not, not behind her sister some, you know, even though I know she loved playing with her, but, um, she, she's made a really good name for herself, you know, so we're, we're fired up about her. Um, you mentioned Ashlyn Shelley also, and, um, Ashlyn, this will be her, um, third year as a starter. Um, she's been, you know, the last few years been a great role player for the Queens. She's you know, done her job and done it well. Um, we're looking for her to have a have a bigger year, more impactful year. Uh, I think she's embracing that role and as far as what she's showing in practice and workouts so far. Um, she's a, she's an excellent three point shooter and an excellent distributor of the ball. So um, you know, her experience and and what she brings to the table is uh, you know something that was underrated on her. You know, being on being on a talented team. 
you know, some of these uh, key role players and people like Ashlyn have, have been, you know, overlooked a little bit on, on accolades and, and uh, getting their name mentioned in articles and things like that. So Ashlyn is, um, you know, she's, she's steady and she's, you know, solid on both ends of the floor. So we're, we're really excited, you know, with, with those three girls back, you know, the, the leadership and the experience. I mean, they were, you know, they were, they were part of, um, you know, something special last year and the, and the years before, but man, I really feel like, you know, this year could be, you know, something different. We're feeling, we're feeling a little different vibe in the air than, than we felt last year. And, uh, you know, obviously a lot of excitement and, um, you know, some of the new faces are bringing some new energy. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun to watch. I'm excited about our group. Coach, let me ask you really quickly about that. Uh, then as, as uh, we we're talking here about the, the upcoming team, because I know that you did bring in some, some height and some size on this team. You were talking about filling some, some roles as well, obviously some returners and you, you, you have some known quantities, but then there are some unknown quantities, at least to the base, you know, your, your uh, everyday Wayland Baptist fan, they're going to be seeing some new faces out there. Yeah, absolutely. We, you know, we've brought in, um, we have eight girls on the roster that are 5'11 to 6'3, which um, gives us a lot of, a lot of good size and height. And um, we're, um, you know, that's something we didn't have last year. You know, we, we were, we had a big starting lineup, you know, with um, Jenna being a guard at six foot and, you know, the Edgman girls are both nearly six foot. So overall size was good, but, you know, we're going to have some, a little more depth at the five spot, you know, with, um, we have a, a freshman uh, young lady from uh, Idaloo, Texas, uh, Taylor Houston, that um, was very successful at the high school level. She's, um, you know, all state, took her team to the state tournament. Um, she's uh, she's going to come in and play some big minutes for us. And she's pretty close to 6'2". We're going to call her 6'2". But um, <laughs> very athletic, runs the floor well, jumps well. She's, man, got a lot of energy. You know, I think she's going to bring a lot of excitement. I think our fans will really love watching her play with her energy. Um, we brought in a, another another young lady from uh, Seward County that uh, is 6'2", almost 6'2". We're gonna call, we'll call her probably around that also. You know how basketball is. I, I do. But, uh, I was going to say, you can do that, Coach. It's yeah. up to you. Yeah, so um, – <laughs> You know, I, I call myself six six, so I'm I'm really a little bit shorter than that. You know, <laughs> nobody plays barefoot, right? <laughs> that's that's exactly so, right. I will. But, uh, I'm going to remember that too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so K- Kenan Shields, you know, she's a she's a Texas kid from Shamrock, Texas, and uh, she she's a uh, more of a what we call like a true post player. She makes really good post moves. She's strong, got a good good strong body. Um, probably a little more like uh, Kaylee Edgman. Uh, as far as um, what she can do in the paint and things like that. Um, really good size. So, you know, and, and I don't want to forget Taryn Schultz, who was our uh, sixth man last year. She um, mentioned her with all the post players, but she's a guard coming off the bench. And, man, she she really came on um, the last about 12 or 13 games last year. She, um, you know, started playing like a, a college player, not so much like a freshman. You know, she was coming in confident and hit some really big shots for us and, was a, one of our key stoppers on the defensive end. So we, we definitely have some excitement, you know, with um, with new girls and, and the girls that are returning. We've we've had some very competitive practices, you know, to, to scrimmage against each other gets uh, gets me a little nervous sometimes, you know, because they're, they're trying to beat each other so hard. And, you know, I think they'll I think they'll carry that over on the court, you know, with with um, starting next Thursday. So we're um, we're primed and ready. We're excited about where we're at and. You know, like I said, there's there's a lot of energy and a lot of excitement, you know, always around the Flying Queen program, but it just feels a little different this year. So it feels feels like we have the opportunity to, you know, do something special. So we're definitely got our eye on that, and that's our ultimate goal, you know, to to win it all at the end. But there, there's a long way till then. But um, you can definitely feel it. You can you can feel a difference in the locker room and out on the court. I can I can sense the excitement. I'm I'm ready to watch you all play right now. I will t- tell you see if you can get uh, somebody. T- uh, Somebody on the staff to move that scorer's table during your scrimmage, though, so that uh, keep everybody intact. You know, yeah. <laughs> make sure everybody goes into the season fully healthy. Coach, just a couple more things really quickly. We're here with Jason Cooper, who is the head women's basketball coach of Royal and Baptist. The Flying Queens, again, picked at the top of the, the Sooner Athletic Conference this season. 
Uh, play gets underway just very quickly. October 27th, you all host the University of the Southwest. And then you have a scrimmage with Division I University of Texas a little bit later on. So it looks like the schedule is uh, it's going to be fun to open up before you even get into Sooner Athletic Conference play. Yeah, we're, we're um, I think we're a little excited and nervous about November 4th with the University of Texas. So we're, it's really hard to focus on, um, you know, University of Southwest. You know, we're, we're excited about the first game, but I know in the back of everybody's minds, they're like, man, we're going to play play at the Moody and down in Austin and, and all of that. So we're, we're trying to keep them focused on um, what's important now, you know, that attitude. And, um, you know, what, when you get a chance to play the university of Texas, when they call you and say, Hey, y'all want to come, come down and have an exhibition. <laughs> you, you can't really say no. So yeah. we, um, when I was the assistant, um, I, I think it was back about 2002, we, um, we played the university of Texas then also. And that happened to be a year they went to the final four with Stacy Stevens. And that really, really talented group. And, uh, so we're, uh, we're going in there, you know, with, with me in my mind going, man, that's, there's no telling what we're going to get into. So we're, we'll know where we're at, you know, they'll, they'll definitely expose, um, you know, our weaknesses. So we'll, we'll hopefully get a, get a lot out of it and, you know, be a great experience for us. What, what better time to have weaknesses exposed than November 4th? I mean, you right. have the whole, yeah. whole season's ahead of you at that point in time. So you have everything, you can put it together and put things back in place. Coach, one other thing, the, the, uh, the excitement of Flying Queens basketball, I'm sure, is fantastic year in and year out. Again, heading into your seventh, 75th season as a program for men's and women's basketball. Both the construction ha- is about to begin on the new Flying Queens Museum. That's uh, what's happening in Plainview and, and looks to – uh, be open, I think, schedule for February of 2023. So that's got to bring some excitement along the way back. And it, I'm sure you have a number of alums that come back year after year and keep the program going. That's part of what makes a good program like yours uh, legendary and fantastic as it is, that the people that have been a part of it over the years. But this will be just another way to bring the folks in. Yeah, we're, we're really excited about the museum. Um we have a, our group, uh, it's called the Hutcherson Flying Queen Foundation. And um, they're the members of those teams that were back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. And, you know, now they're starting to get members from the 80s, 90s involved. And, um, you know, those ladies uh, did so much for, you know, women's sports in general, not just Flying Queen basketball. You know, they, they changed the game. They changed, um, you know, just the landscape of what women were, you know, allowed to do or, you know, what, what they were doing wasn't considered, you know, such a, you know, strange thing, you know, they weren't yeah. just sitting in the kitchen, you know? So for them, for them and, and the way that they've paved the the road for, for our young women that are playing today, I mean, it's the, the amount of history and the amount of stories and, and the impact. I mean, it's, you, you can't, you can't cover it all very quickly. I mean, it, it needs a museum, you know, and we have um, they brought in so many trophies and and things into our gym that we have nowhere to put anything new. So we're <laughs> we're we're blessed with it, you know. And it's um, you know, it's something that we're all really excited about. And you know, I think it's you know so special. It's not just you know a hall of honor kind of deal. It's a it's a hall of fame. Um, and and the, these women are in the Naismith Hall of Fame. Right. You know that they're they're they're, um, they're a big deal. You know, not just in West Texas and. We're, we're pretty blessed where we get to meet so many of the former flying Queens almost everywhere we go. There's a group of them, you know, even, you know, when we went to Iowa last year, there was, you know, a lady there that, that played on the Queens back in the sixties. And she was, she was all over the tournament up there, you know, watching our games and supporting us. And, you know, it's, it's pretty common, you know, and it's common, but it's really, it's really a neat deal because you've got a connection and you got some home, you got some fans on, even on the road sometimes. That is, it's it's just awesome to get to hear that coach. And I could listen to that for another half hour. I would appreciate it. The winningest basketball program in women's college basketball and coach, what a privilege I'm sure it is for you to get to be a part of something like that. Uh, not just your first time through, by the way, you, you've been a part of a number of great teams, but this year's team could be one of those great ones as well. We look forward to seeing how it turns out again, the Wayland Baptist flying Queens at the top, the sooner athletic conference preseason coaches poll for 22-23. Coach Jason Cooper, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit, and we will definitely be following you all this year. Thank you so much for having me, and um, and I look forward to the season and look forward to following you guys too. You guys do a great job, so thank thank you. you.